You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 3rd, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the middle of middle America, where a few angry letters from the wingnuts who hang out at DJ's diner can shake NBC to its foundations. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. January 3rd, where we've already had enough of 2020. Yeah, we have. We really, really have. <laughs> How are you doing, Blue Gal, in this, in this bright, beautiful new decade, new you, new year, blah, 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 and so forth? Yeah, I think it's kind of telling that uh, our adult Sunday school is having us come up with a word of the year. This is a thing that Sunday schools and other groups do. Uh-huh. Rather than a mission statement, you come up with a word yeah. like direction or governed or truth or whatever and my word and i can explain it later if you want me to but Uh, my word of the year is beauty yes and your word of the year is my my placeholder until i find a better one is revenge (laughs) um it seems like a not a particularly christian thing to do uh revenge is his word of the year it's the first thing that came to mind um uh, and i i regret it not regret it and it's it's my placeholder but it's it's going to be a real long ugly year full of um real long ugly screeds by people who are going to dominate our headlines only because they shout louder only because they have a bigger microphone than we do um this is this is appalling and the reason i did my little opening about the the letters from dj's diner which is a real place by the way is there's a little article in a place called Page Six uh, that that passed almost unnoticed, except by weirdos like me today, uh, which is entitled Chuck Todd's Meet the Press Daily may be sidelined to make room for Nicole Wallace. They're dangling that job over his head publicly. Um, now he has people, anonymous people, of course. Uh, I believe the article refers to them as a TV insider. Hey, asshole, I'm a TV insider. I watch TV. (laughs) So that means nothing to me. But a TV insider, who I assume is Chuck Todd's mom, um, Mm -hmm. says, Chuck doesn't want to move to 9 a.m. He'd rather leave MSNBC completely and focus on Meet the Press on Sunday. So there's a whole bunch of, a whole bunch, I assume four people who are really indignant that uh, Chuck Todd is is being, is contemplating moving him around. Another insider, again, that could be you, Blue Gal, because you watch TV too muse that it was madness for nbc to upset the face of its political coverage ahead of 2020 they need chuck on the air every day says again chuck todd's mom said his agent yes (laughs) but the point is why are they dangling chuck todd's job over his head in this very public way and if you go all the way to the end there's a a fun little bit which we in the writing business call the telling detail I was going to say the lead. They buried the lead way deep. Last week, he he said in the Rolling Stone magazine interview that he was just being naive. He had no idea Republicans were using him as their foil and were coming on his show to lie to him. And he was just very, very naive about, about their dishonesty, their serial pathological dishonesty. Of course, four years ago on a podcast, he said, yeah, I know they lie to me, but that's, that's show business. And if I call them on it, they won't come on my show anymore. So, you know... I rely on the, on the on the listeners to figure out who they're who's being lied to. We all know that they're crazy. We all know they're lying to us. But fuck it, this is show business. Who cares? So Chuck Todd is not naive. He's a liar. He was hired into that position to um, let Republicans lie. That's his job. And so it wasn't the overwhelming, well researched catastrophe that was uh, unloaded on his head by sane, normal people like us. That drove Andy Lack and Phil Griffin, his bosses, to dangle his job. No, what what caused him to do that was, quote, the move comes as Todd faces backlash for highlighting a letter to the editor of a small newspaper that stated voters who believe in, quote, fairy tales and Noah's Ark were more likely to vote for Donald Trump. They dangled his job and threatened his cafeteria privileges because he had the audacity 
to brush lightly up against the fact that wing nuts are idiots. <laughs> and that's why Donald Trump has supporters, because they're morons. Um, and I'd like to bring into our conversation a gentleman named Shipwreck Kelly. Shipwreck Kelly was uh, in the 20s and 30s, which seems appropriate since it was a century ago. Shipwreck Kelly was one of, uh, he was the most famous one, but he was a pole sitter. He would climb up on flagpoles on top of very tall buildings and stay there for days. Mm. And that's how he was famous. He would sit up there. He would sit on a chair. He would stand. He'd eat lunch, he'd whatever, whatever. But he, his whole thing was, and there were lots of people doing this, climbing up to the top of a very top, a very big pole on the top of a very tall building and just staying there. And I have to believe that Andy Lack and Phil Griffin are the television equivalents of that executives are Mm -hmm. their position their position is so precarious that they're acutely aware of every breeze every creak Mm -hmm. every push every everything and and they're the people who just insist that their people get on twitter they're the people who you know make it company policy that get out there on the social media and talk to the kids in their snapchats and their instagrams and the idea that they would be not just unaware of uh uh, just oblivious to the fact that not just this week, but Chuck Todd is just a fucking disaster. They picked him to replace David Gregory, who was exactly the same kind of shithead in exactly the same way. And they fired David Gregory in the middle of like a phone call when he's out on the road and replaced him with Chuck Todd, who is just exactly as awful as, as Gregory was. They can't the face they would lose by admitting they made a huge fucking mistake. But he was so bad during the election. Absolutely. The king of both sides do it during the election. And Hillary Clinton was overprepared right. for a debate. And he, yeah. and it was so yeah. clear that he was he had a script, and the script is always playing both sides. Always, It's like he's wearing a, an explosive device in his skull, and Andy Lack will blow his head off on the air if he doesn't just say both sides are to blame, because that's, that's the fucking party line here. So... A million emails and a whole bunch of Twitter and Chuck Todd trending on Twitter, which you got to notice eventually, two to mm-hmm. three times in one week versus 10 paper letters from the wing nuts at DJ's diner. They're like, you know, it was the paper letters from the wing nuts that really moved us to really get Chuck Todd uh, back in line. No, I don't think it's but the fact that he crossed a line talking about voters. Maybe. And the voters noticed. Mm-hmm. And he, that's crossing a line that that you don't criticize voters for anything. That's how the Tea Party got away with what they got away with is because you don't blame the voters. You don't blame Trump voters for anything. You, you treat them like you, you know. blame politicians <laughs> in Washington. Politicians yes, in Washington. Washington. Out. You blame Washington. It's exactly. It's both sides. It really is both sides. So uh, you have in our notes so far, 2020 has been the year that the liberal superpower has been making a comeback. Yes, which is weird because. And- it is weird. Um, it, it It's making a comeback through the uh, medium of the open sewer that is Twitter, which I kind of think is hilarious. Um, and remember, the liberal superpower is memory. And literally since the beginning of 2020, the beginning of this year, which is just three days old, on Twitter in the last 24 hours. Oh, that's not quite true. I think this goes back to a week. So let's make it a week. Um. A two, now that we're in the middle of World War III, or the, the opening salvo of World War III, Donald Trump, as of today, uh, assassinated a leader uh, of the, uh, in the Iraqi government. I'm sorry, the Iranian government in Iraq, thus precipitating what might very well be a tremendous, violent, disruptive, chaotic blowback and drag us right back into the shithole that George Bush put us in 10 years ago um, and worse. But the the key here is to remember that uh, attacking Iran is what uh, Donald Trump did. And this week, a 2011 video uh, surfaced in which Donald Trump is predicting that a, quote, weak and ineffective President Obama would attack Iran in order to win a second term. And there's a whole bunch of other tweets from him saying, don't fall for it, Republicans. He's going to attack Iran. He's going to start a war because he's weak and dumb and he wants to win re-election. That's the only way he's going to do it. Perfect. Um, There's always a tweet, but there isn't always a video. Yeah. And there is actually a video of private citizen Donald Trump. Yeah, screaming about. In his office at Trump Tower, about screaming about Barack the Obama. The Kenyan usurper is yeah. going to start a war to, ran, to win re-election because he's weak and ineffective. Yep. Um, Soledad O'Brien this week, again, did good service 
by digging up Kathleen Parker, the horrible, horrible op-ed writer who still has one of the many, many, many people who still has a fucking job that for reasons that no one will explain to anyone. Um, I believe it's in the Wall Street Journal, an op-ed from November of 2016 entitled, Relax, Whoever Wins Will Be Fine. Because as you and I both know, Blue Gal, there is the iron rule of David Brooks. But it doesn't apply just to David Brooks. It is, if you're a conservative op-ed writer, the horrible shit you write a month or a year or a day ago is never quoted to you in real time. We all just agree, or the, the your your peers all just agree to forget it. Well, Soledad O'Brien broke the iron rule of David Brooks and dragged this out of the history book. And I'll quote now from it. If Trump wins, he'll be held more or less in check by the House and Senate because that's the way our system of government's set up. Not even Republicans are eager to follow Trump's lead. There won't be a wall. He won't impose any religious-based immigration restrictions because even Trump isn't that lame-brained. He'll dress up and behave at state dinners and be funny when called upon. He'll even invite the media to the White House holiday party. He won't nuke Iran for rude gestures. He won't assault women. He and Vladimir Putin will hate each other respectfully. She's like seven for seven on being wrong. She got... (laughs) everything she's in the bill crystal area of wow it's i didn't know it was possible statistically to be that completely fucking wrong but i know of no job other than conservative beltway pundit where you can be that fucking wrong all the time and you get promoted and no one mentions it except for rude people like uh nobody bloggers certain podcasters from the midwest and soledad o'brien can i ask you a question though about memory given that we're on that topic Absolutely. I'm fascinated that Fox News took the past 24 hours to get together all the Iraq war pimps. Yeah. Well, you know, Ari <laughs> Fleischer's on your TV, you yes, know, he is. On, yes. and, he, and, and, he's, and he's making statements like they will greet us as liberators. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's actually following that same line because mm-hmm. they don't have anything else. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. I actually linked you today at Crooks and Liars. Uh, it'll be up, no. a, yeah, up a little later today. Your your Bush belly snitches post oh, yeah. from many many years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. the Bush off machine where mm-hmm. Fox News, Glenn Beck, the Tea Party, you know, convinced all these voters that they never voted for never, Bush. Right? Never, they never, never voted it. for the failure that was the Bush administration. Mm-hmm. Twice. And erased twice. their memory twice, right? Yeah. Erased their erased all memory of that. Right, never happened. Um, but Fox News viewers have also had Benghazi drilled into their heads so many times that they'll never forget Benghazi because sure that will. is a Fox News. Sure, they will. Well, no, I don't sure think they, they will. will. Okay. I don't think they will. I'm going to argue with you mm-hmm. that Fox News coverage in the past 24 hours. It it got so bad that the be, that prior to Trump's attack, prior to Trump's assassination uh-huh. of an Iranian general, we were so close to even Fox News viewers realizing that Trump had a Benghazi-like situation. And the embassy in Baghdad was attacked because of American behavior, and if Fox News could not get around the fact that there is an attack on an embassy and it's the same thing. The president's unprepared for it. And so they they were initially before the assassination of the Iranian general, Mm -hmm. uh, very concerned and very upset that we not compare one attack on an embassy with another attack on an embassy. The five was going on and on about this. You know, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not Benghazi. Don't call it Trump's Benghazi. Mm-hmm. And then we have something to erase the memory again, because now we're in we're at the precipice of World War Three. Right. Got, got and an impeachment. No one's talking about that. And anymore. an impeachment. Right. Right. <laughs> Although, it's a twofer. Uh, and so, what do we do when that happens? We have on Ari Fleischer. We have on. We have on Carl Rove, Ari Fleischer, and on the phone, Oliver North. Oh, really? All, <laughs> yes. Carl Wolfowitz was not available. Yeah. <laughs> Oliver North on the phone on Hannity. Yeah. Well. And then for, for color, they brought on the mortal remains of Joe Piscopo. Yeah. But I digress. Yeah. The idea of manipulating memory when you've, you've absolutely brainwashed people with the word Benghazi. 
Okay. And the thing they know about it is bad embassy, right? Embassy right. burning. And here's a picture of embassy burning. Fires right. at an embassy. Right. And the only way to do I really think that Trump in part did this because he was watching Fox. Yeah, I have many thoughts. Um, none of which I, I don't disagree with you. I, I would like to quote uh, Richard Bruce Cheney when he said, uh, Reagan proved deficits don't matter. Right, right. Uh, Republicans, yep. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Republicans don't believe anything. They don't remember yep. anything. They remember whatever Sean Hannity shits into their skull yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I, mm-hmm. I firmly believe Benghazi will be as forgotten as deficits were. The minute they're told until is, Hillary Clinton pops her head yeah, up and says something, this is, and, then and this is okay. not me yes, speaking. This right. is George Orwell. George Orwell described right. double think and not as the ability to forget the past and just erase the past, but to selectively re recall things when you need to, and then re forget them, and then forget that you forgot them. That's yeah. what the yeah. Republican, the entire Republican base has been trained to do. They can well, remember. And this is what this is what bothers me about mm-hmm. Nancy Pelosi. I we had this conversation last night that yes, we did over dinner our date Nancy, our date. Nancy Pelosi you took me out to dinner thank you very much I had a wonderful Nan- time by the way <laughs> <laughs> thank <laughs> you <laughs> me too yeah. very romantic mm-hmm. Nancy Pelosi uh, absolutely has mastered you know the art of war she's yeah. in Donald Trump's head sure. even after he assassinated an Iran- Iranian general Mm -hmm. today he is tweeting about nancy pelosi yes he can't help himself yes this is just there is no wag the dog because donald trump doesn't know how to control a tail his own tail he just does not have that in him Mm -hmm. so i i get it that nancy pelosi is winning on this impeachment thing by just staying in donald trump's head this way yes but her argument that uh, there is a difference between policy differences and impeachable offenses assumes that do- that Republicans are arguing in good faith about anything. Right. Right. And no. I'm over it. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm just over it. I've been over it for a long time, possibly since 1994, um, depending on how you measure measure time. Um, as I said today on the Twitter. We are now living with the consequences of the decision made by the mainstream press and by way too many people in the Democratic leadership, including Barack Obama uh, and Nancy Pelosi, not to curb stomp the Bush regime Iraq war pimps when they had a chance, Mm -hmm. but instead promote them all into tenured media positions and pretend the Bush years never happened. And once Republicans learned that they were going to be able to get away with the epic disaster that was Bush with no consequences, it was game over. There was there was no need for them to pretend anymore to believe anything because whatever the fuck came out of their mouth, every one of these assholes is a PhD in civil rights history mm-hmm. right up until 1963. <laughs> and then it gets real dark for many decades until Barack Obama comes along and ruins America. But they have they don't believe anything. So the idea that they would hang on to some previous iteration of their brainwashing uh is i think doesn't accurately diagnose what happened to them they are the wholly owned property of fox news and whatever sean hannity tells them tonight they will believe tomorrow it doesn't matter if it conflicts this is what people on in the normal world like you and i find confusing because when someone says one thing one day and says the exact opposite the next day both with equal passion you think there's something wrong with them well, usually there is, but mm-hmm. in this case, they're just Republicans. And they will go on doing this until they are brutally stopped from doing it, until power is slapped out of their hands and they're made to sit in the fucking corner for the next 30 years while we fix their problems. And until that happens, they're just going to go right on making shit up. They will, they will rediscover Benghazi in three years when it becomes convenient. They'll rediscover yeah. John Kerry. Yeah. Whenever they need to. When it becomes convenient. Right. Yeah. They, uh, Whatever they need to. It's, it's This is just a, a toolkit for them. And they don't have any ideology. They don't have any belief system. They don't, don't believe in, in in their their Christianity is wholly ridiculous. It's just words that they put together to make liberals cry. So, Drift Glass, I think, I think your uh, righteous rant about this is, help, is helping you cope with that. 
for those of us that don't righteous rant, yes. it seems pretty hopeless. Uh huh. Well, that's why we have elections. Yeah. In 2020. And that's really what I'm working on this yeah. year. I mean, postcards to voters, registering yeah. voters, because I do think what is happening, and I don't want to go full Marianne Williamson on anybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but I do think there is a perspective at which you can see that the world is being wrenched out of selfishness. Yeah. The the selfishness of the baby boom generation. And, you know, you and I are on the cusp of that. Mm -hmm. So I take responsibility as much as anybody else, but we're being, you know, the planet is not going to survive that level of selfishness anymore. No. And so I, I feel as though, and, and if I may, just getting back to a moment about why my word is beauty. Yeah. My word of the year is beauty. And I, it's not vanity. It's not putting on makeup. It's not before and after pictures or anything like that. I found an article in Harvard Magazine, excuse me, mm -hmm. about, <laughs> and it's by an undergraduate mathematics major. And she talks about uh, solutions and finding theorems, you know, proofs of theorems. Yeah. And how you work and work and work and work and work with numbers. And advanced mathematicians always talk about numbers being beautiful. And she never sees it, <laughs> you know, that she's been working and it's like, no, numbers are crazy making. <laughs> and she and her uh, associate were working on this problem that, one of the proofs of which was, or what, what one of her professors said was, as you as numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger, they actually get closer together. There's like this vision thing where they get they form a pattern that you will eventually see, and it's gorgeous. It is beautiful how numbers adding up into infinity become this pattern. And she didn't see it for, you know, 18 months, three semesters, she's working on this stuff and these big chalkboards full of numbers and so forth. And one day she just got it. It just came to mm -hmm. her. And she said, you work and you work and you work and you work. And one day you step back and look at the Sistine Chapel and it's like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a glorious thing, mm -hmm. you know. And I think if we can, and this, I mean, this year already, this is three days into the year, and we're at World War III, and Australia is burning to the ground, mm -hmm. and a billion animals are dying. And, you know, I want to cry right now because it's just, everything is just horrible. Mm -hmm. But this is our opportunity to work. And we're working on numbers and, and things that are crazy making. Mm -hmm. But as you work and work and work and work, you step back and go, oh, my gosh, look at this. Look at what we've done. Mm -hmm. And I have hope that we will get there. Um, I have a friend uh, who is dealing with cancer treatment. And uh, on the day of her surgery, another friend, a mutual friend of ours said, oh, what a shitty day. You know, she's got to go to the hospital and do this and this and this and this. And I looked at him and just said, are you kidding? She's going to the hospital to get healed. Right. You know, yes, it's a shitty day that she has to go in for cancer treatment. Right. But let's hope she comes out of the hospital well. You know, mm -hmm. she comes out of the hospital cancer free. That's what we're going for, not cancer treatment. We're going for her being back. That's what we want. Right. And right. I feel like the cancer on this country has to be cut out. Well, however we do it and and we're going we do it with elections so let's do it with an election it might take two or three more elections to oh, get gonna, there it's going to take a generation it, it will and, yeah. and but yeah. as, as i'm sure i'm misquoting churchill or maybe not when when going through hell keep going right you right. know this is this right. is when you know we back in the olden days during the bush administration when we were you know we were mere young stripling bloggers <laughs> looking at the future with a bright glow in our eye and a little tan on our cheeks Saying, and we told people this is going to take a generation to clean up. Yeah, it's going to take a generation because George Bush, the George Bush administration, was such an absolute comprehensive clusterfuck. It fucked up everything: the economy, the environment, uh, world peace, uh, you name it. If they touched it, it was awful. 
And we're living in the shadow of that. The, the Trump administration is the is the is the dying remnants of the Bush administration regrouping twice as toxic as they were under Bush using all the same tricks they used under Bush. Um, just the masks are off now. Mm -hmm. Oh, they really are a bunch of just racist assholes. That's all they ever were. That's all they're ever going to be. They're going to go to their fucking graves being hateful, racist assholes. All right, let's just bake that into the equation now and move forward. And, and, and you can see a pattern if you step back. Yep. And, and that's why we're talking a little bit about memory. It's well, yeah. if, if you step back a little bit and notice the, sort of the, the absolute consistency with which the people who've been wrong have been wrong and the absolute consistency which, which, with which they are protected by the corporations that employ them and the basic two or three page playbook Republicans have to run everything they run. There's no complexity here. It's not hard to understand. It's tragic that a third of this country are just dead loss meatheads, but it's a fact. So it's a fact we have to deal with. Um, I, I, everyone speaking of memories, having fun, on Twitter today, batting around Maureen Dowd's 2016 op-ed entitled Donald the Dove, Hillary the Hawk. Yeah. And uh, I do want to mention that there's a gentleman on the Twitter named Oliver Darko, who uh, this week, Trump campaign press secretary Kaylee McEnany announced that in 2016, Donald Trump was the foregone nominee from the beginning. Never did anyone go up against President Trump. We loved our nominee. And it took Oliver Darko, quote, literally 30 seconds to find a video from 2015 where Kaylee McEnany says Donald Trump is a horrible presidential candidate who spreads hate. Yep. It's that fast. Because she's don't... selling sunscreen. She's not selling anything real. She's no. just she's a lying. spokesmodel for whatever, whoever pays her. Yeah. And she yeah. squints into the glare of whoever's questioning her and ignores what they say and, and presents the lie of the day. She right. is a liar. Anytime she goes on a television show, you know that the person who runs that show has consented to put a filthy liar on the air and let her get away with murder. And that, that way, you know, you never have to take the person who's emceeing that show seriously ever again, because they, they're not journalists. They're just whores. So, Wisconsin GOP, I understand, has done something remarkable. <laughs> well, this is moving, uh, just giving people a little bit of comic relief, but also help, helping to remind us how certain Republicans expect and demand two-thirds of the field. Yes. You know, yes. you should give me 50% of the field because if you don't give me 50%, it's not fair. It's not fair. Even if you're 20% of the voters... I get 50%, right? And mm -hmm. that means you're getting 80%. Um, Wisconsin State Rep Scott Allen, uh, he has a plan for Black History Month in Wisconsin. He does. Every year, apparently, they identify 10 people who are instrumental to Black History Month. The legislature does a uh, resolution, right? Non-binding, it's just a piece of paper. It mm -hmm. declares it's Black History Month. Here are 10 Black people who are have contributed to our history, et cetera. Congratulations. It's Black History Month. Resolution. Scott Allen decided that it would be more fair if six of the people on the Black History Month list were white. <laughs> That's just fair. That's just fair. Well, because white people worked on the Underground Railroad, too. <laughs> Wait a minute. Three-fifths of the list. Or that <laughs> exactly. I they get, they get three-fifths, literally. I just like... I my brain hurts. Literally. <laughs> now, I have a question. Was Jefferson yes. Davis one of those people? Because, you know, without Jefferson <laughs> Davis, there would have been no Emancipation Proclamation, Blue Gal. Anyway, so. I am reading this from Wonkett, and there is a state senator named Lena Taylor who is a goddess, all right? <laughs> she just, she's an African-American woman who just, mm -hmm. come on, man. She said, and I'm reading this all from Wonkett. Her quote, why should this white man, Alan, be leading what we do on Black History Month? The fact that this even needs to be discussed is a reflection of where we are as a society. Mm -hmm. I wake up every day as a black woman. I'm not exactly sure what it is that Scott Allen believes he knows better than me. Now, 
then Alan, to his credit, tried to explain oh, to her oh, good. what he knows more than a black woman. He's a white, so he's white mansplaining. That's the best kind he's of explaining. White mansplain what it is. Excellent. It's important that we not politicize black history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be a tragedy. Here's what he said. I'd rather we work together to pass a resolution the Republican caucus can be excited about. Yeah, like the Missouri Compromise. Yeah. If we can do that one simple thing, then we can start to attack the tougher issues. Yeah. Yeah. And all those issues that are tougher than endemic racism. And then he accused her of identity politics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At this point, Taylor, who is running for mayor of Milwaukee, and Wonkett calls her a national treasure, sent Alan an email. And this is, I am reading what she said verbatim. Huh? Thank you, Massa Allen, for picking whose we should honor, sir. <laughs> we sure ain't capable of thinking for ourselves, sir. <laughs> oh, God. She's my hero of the week. There's going to be several people from D&J's diner who are going to write very angry letters very to hear about letters that. letters to her, mm -hmm. yes. About how unfair and a politicized environment and how why are you polarizing things why so much? Why are you doing that all the identity politics? Dividing America. Why are you dividing America by excluding white people from being honored on Black History Month? Mm -hmm. We should have at least six out of ten people on our I, list. I just, I just... I just don't know. It it is literally three fifths. I hadn't done the math. Yeah. I had not. Speaking of math, I had not done the math. Yeah. That, and can I just say this? Speaking as yeah. a middle aged white guy, fucking white people, blue gal. <laughs> fucking white people. I just, I I just you on can't. That. I can't. I am such a race traitor. It's it's not even funny. Well, <laughs> and and the fact that he gave away the game with yeah. the you know if you want Republicans to vote for you, better make it more white. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, that makes my decision very easy. Very easy. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of people who are out of touch with America, mm -hmm. yeah, more than 200 Republican lawmakers have signed a letter asking the Supreme Court to upend Roe v. Wade because it's yeah. unworkable. Yeah, it just can't work. It just can't work. You know work, what's unworkable? Out. Telling women what to do with their bodies is unworkable. I, you know, this is this really is the last days of Pompeii. This is just... They, they <laughs> I'm see, telling you. They can I'm see the mountains you. smoking behind them like, okay... What can we fucking loot before this whole thing goes bad? Because we got to just stuff our pockets. We, can we get rid of Roe versus Wade? Great. Pack the courts? Cool. Uh, yep. Maybe just uh, uh, wipe 20 million voters off the voter rolls because, fuck it, they're black. Why not? Yeah, we'll do that, too. But the mountain is going to blow. The volcano yeah, is going to erupt. Right. No matter what gonna they do. It's going to be painful for all gonna, of us when and, that happens. And yeah. like, like climate change, this could be fixed early if reasonable people had recognized the problem, which was painfully obvious, and intervened back when things weren't this fucking awful. But now they're awful. Now solutions are going to be fairly drastic. And they're going to be, they're going to leave some very raw feelings and some people with uh, stripped of power who will feel incredibly aggrieved because it wasn't my fault. I didn't keep slaves. And sorry, but those are the options you have left us with by being such a pernicious force on the throat for of American politics and white for nationalism. generations. Yep. So sorry, that's the way it goes. Um, I did want to mention that Joan Walsh also did good service mm -hmm. uh, with her end of the decade. Both siderism has screwed us lamentation uh, entitled this fucking decade. Um, in which she said for years, media and political elites refused to acknowledge the growing racism and radicalism of the Republican party. Their both sides ism led to Trump's GOP takeover. Yep. Now, I have nothing but nice thing to say about Joan Walsh. You've interviewed Joan Walsh. Yes, uh, I love her. We all yeah. follow each other. She's 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 terrific. My only caveat, which may make you a little depressed, is I, too, was going to write an end of the decade. Both sides have screwed us <laughs> lamentation, except I realized I wrote it a decade ago. Yes, you did. I you wrote it a wrote decade this, ago. Yeah. December 31st, January 1st of 2010, exactly this article. But you know and, what, Drift Class? Uh, I'm... I'm also done being resentful of people finally coming around oh, to our way me of too. thinking. <laughs> no, like... no, no. And, and let's let's repeat this very clearly. I'm not resentful at all. No. I think it's great. I think that people who try to sneak into the, our little uh, we, we told you so party um, by pretending they had nothing to do with the problem 
Yeah, that's not like, Joan Walsh. No, 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 yeah. that's not, not yeah. at all. No, no, she she ha- she got herself. Read the article. We'll put the link up. She got herself yeah. fired from Morning Joe. Yes, from refusing to play the both sides do a game, even though Joe and Mika both basically demanded that she say Keith Oberman was as bad as Sean Hannity. Right, and she right. wouldn't do it, and that was the end of her career at MSNBC, pretty much. So she no, she's been on the on the side of the angels for the most part for forever. It is the never Trumpers who want to say, "Whoa, man, can you believe that Republican Party? Man, everything was going great until around 2015. Then who the fuck knows what happened? Those people, no. I want to hear, Stuart Stevens is, is about the only one who ha- now has a book out called It Was All a Lie. Mm-hmm. And he and I actually exchange, you know, tweets and and occasional email where he says, no, it, it, it was a lie. You're right. It was all a fucking lie. Republicans never believed any of this stuff. I know I ran i was the most successful republican consultant of my generation and it was all a lie um people like that uh who are willing to admit what happened how we got here atone for it and and do some degree of cleanup of the mess they made i'm more than happy to have on board i'm not a vengeful person despite my my word of the year but these fuckers who just who got themselves bloody and this is, you know, this week, I guess, is the perfect example. All the same people who got us into fucking Iraq right. are back in the fucking headlines talking about foreign policy as if it never happened, as if their their hands are clean, as if they weren't horribly wrong before. And the reason that they are allowed to do that is because they are permitted to be promoted into positions of authority within the Republican Party and within the mainstream press because those two institutions are are averse to holding anyone who works for them responsible for anything. They can't well, and do and they're it. also addicted to covering wars. Yes, well, that's true. And war stocks. Yeah. How are my war stocks And war stocks, yeah. Yeah, just like your pharma stock. You want to talk about Geraldo Rivera screaming at Brian Kilmeade? Well, it was <laughs> it was a screaming fit. That kind of made my morning. Yeah, yeah. I, I covered it at Crooks and Liars. It's yeah. just, uh, they, had a, they had a screaming battle and... and uh Geraldo Rivera invoked the name of Bill Crystal. I know. I know. Which was remarkable. You know, you're just like Bill Crystal. You never met a war you didn't love. And uh Brian Kilmeade's job is to repeat the Fox News mantra at a time when Republicans attack another country. Merka! Mm-hmm. Merka! Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah! Oh yeah! We're gonna we're gonna bash some heads in. Yeah, yeah. And Geraldo Rivera, you know, has been on the ground in Iraq (laughs) and uh, uh, he wasn't going to have it. And, you know, a lot of people on Twitter were like, boy, I'm waking up third day of the year and I agree with Geraldo Rivera. What's going on? Well, (laughs) it's because it will pass. It will pass. (laughs) This is what happens when Roger Ailes dies. Yeah. Um, They don't have anyone who is who is at the head of the table deciding what the party line is going to be day to day. Well, and and let's talk about the table too, because it was so serious to have you know an assassination that Fox and Friends went to the news desk instead of the crotch couch, yeah. and it was a news desk that you couldn't see through, so you couldn't see Ainsley Earhart's legs. That's oh, how they, serious it was. That's very serious. When you can't see right up the crotch, you right know up it's the crotch bad. in the crotch couch. They took away the crotch couch and put up a desk, but the desk wasn't see through. Oh God, that, like you Trump's know wall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I said, Roger Ailes is is uh, in hell spinning right now because mm-hmm. this is not the TV network he created. It is. It just depended on him holding the whip yeah. and getting everyone in line, and eventually, you know, firing people who got too big or got too um, mm-hmm. in- financially inconvenient. But right. you know, Roger Ailes has metastasized. No one knows what the what the big lie is they're supposed to tell today. So they all look up to Sean Hannity. So, Sean, tell us, what are we supposed to be lying about today? And and they don't know. And and Donald Trump was never supposed to be their candidate. This was not supposed right. to happen. It was supposed to be someone who would just shut up and take orders from Fox News. And Donald Trump is, and actually, a, there is someone who takes orders from Fox News, but he's so unpredictable that you the <laughs> the push and push me pull you on this is we have to defend Trump no matter what, and Trump flips from one day to the next. He should be tweeting about nothing but our victory over Iran today, right? Right. And he's tweeting about Nancy Pelosi and impeachment. He oh, can't and, stop. 
And, and speaking of, of Fox News, I do want to mention, uh, paraphrase Ewe Mistal, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, talking about wild horses couldn't drag me to go see Bombshell. <laughs> Good. A bunch of white ladies who worked for this fascist, uh, mm-hmm. seditious, treasonous news. I'm, I'm now misquoting him. News yeah. propaganda shithole complaining that it was also a sexual predatory factory um, is just too much. You know? And actually, that was the take of one of my uh, knitting friends who did go to see it. Yeah. And her, her takeaway was these ladies didn't get on their knees for their paycheck. No. You know, and and, and that's not victim blaming it, when you're a hot blonde and you can walk out of a building and go into local news and make a living. You decided I have to be at the top of my career ladder mm-hmm. and I'll do anything, including get along with a Roger Ailes, you know, well, and, whatever, and, whatever you know, you, you eyes open, clear head, went to work mm-hmm. for evil people. You're right. And then you you, got you went to work that, for Fox. <laughs> then you got freaked out. Oh, you didn't mean that kind of evil. That evil is yeah. bad. But there's yeah, other stuff, right. you know, bashing liberals, trashing the country, ruining everything. Bashing I the touch. poor, yeah, bashing that's immigrants. Fine. That's, that's fine. fine. That's yeah. all cool. But this well, and bashing your own intelligence. Let's let's yeah. face it. Yeah. Um, Greta Van Susteren. Who's the one who finally? No, not well, Greta. But then the other one who who actually sued. Fox. I forget. I, I don't know. Uh, I, they're all blonde anyway. and. And, and yeah. replaceable to me but yeah she actually but she she has a law degree yeah and she dumbed it down to sit and on the cross dumbed couch it down and dumbed it down and said i looked up the word czar uh, today nice. in the dictionary mm-hmm. yeah you know just absurd so, no so i'm, I'm right. sorry my heart does not go out to people who went to work for fascists and discovered for Fox, fascists and now all of a people. sudden they're mad yeah, yeah. right all righty news roundup shall we after you yeah as of this morning, NBC reports that 3,500 more troops are being deployed to the Middle East. Fuck Donald Trump. Yeah. The, the proof of Donald Trump's criminality in the Ukraine treason keeps piling up. Acting White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney was warned by a senior advisor last summer that he should, quote, expect Congress to become unhinged, unquote, if the White House withheld security aid to Ukraine. According to, the, to a study by the Federal Reserve, Trump's tariffs backfired and led to job losses and higher prices. And those mooching commie farmers <laughs> got more than $22 billion of your hard-earned tax money to bribe them into continuing to support Donald Trump, the guy who ruined their markets. Uh, this nets out to more than the price of Barack Obama saving the American auto industry during the Great Recession, which was, as you recall, according to Republicans, worse than 12 Stalins. Mm-hmm. Trump's North Korea policy is now exposed as a complete and utter failure on Trump himself as a credulous chump who can be played by any tyrant who strokes his ego. Yeah, there, there's something about Deutsche Bank today. No, I'm not, oh, I, my God. You want to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, Deutsche Bank uh, documentation is coming out that uh, it looks like the Russians guaranteed Donald Trump's loans. I mean, the, the, the Donald Trump was actually fucking broke. And yeah. in debt, and the Russian and in debt, and needed a loan badly, and Deutsche Bank had cut him off mm-hmm. until the Russians stepped in and said, "We'll co-sign a loan." The Russian bank co-signed the loan for Donald Trump. Yeah, over seven hundred million dollars. Yeah, and they've been collecting the vig on that ever since. Which is why you don't see his tax returns ever, ever, ever. You'd rather go to prison. Then release his tax returns. Uh, this is the week that Julian Castro dropped out, which is a major blow to the Democratic Party. Um, yep. It's now the next debate is going to be all white all the time, which is not what I signed up for. Well, we don't know if Andrew Yang's going to be in the debate or not. It okay. wouldn't be all white if it was Andrew uh, Yang. But fair point. But I didn't Got sign it. up for Andrew but... Yang either. So <laughs> if you if you count. You're either white or a billionaire, yeah. then yeah, you know, and that's the point. I think that's the point is the situation with money and the the Washington press corps obsession with how much did everybody raise in the fourth yeah. quarter, yes. which Charlie Pierce cut right down. Like yeah. if that's how you're ranking the candidates is whether or not they raised twenty million dollars in three months, something's wrong with our democracy. Well, that's and that's right the there. only way they can remain, you know, neutral. 
They can't report on right. facts, lies, policy, because that'll make people unhappy. That'll make the people at DJ's diner write letters. So instead, they report on money and poll numbers, which are morally well, neutral. And where know. does that money go? That money goes to former media employees yes. who are consultants, and it and, goes to ad buys. And, and that's ad it. Buys on television. That's right. Goes and right to the That's it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Rana, we know you're a Romney McDaniel. Cites uh, two women as GOP success stories for women, Kellyanne Conway and Ivanka Trump. Yeah. Uh, more good news from Wisconsin Republicans who are stepping on their own rakes. Uh, this is my this week's feel good story for me. Republicans want to purge nearly a quarter million voters from the election uh, from the Wisconsin polls. But the election commission they themselves set up is stopping them from doing it. Right. They tried to hamstring any election reform by making the election commission uh-huh. half Republican and half Democrat, which yeah. as it is in nationally, the Republicans have hamstringed it that way as well. Uh-huh. And uh, they forgot that the election commission has to approve by state law, any purging of the voter rolls. And so the three Democrats on that committee have said no. And I just love it when stupid people try to pull levers and it breaks off in their hand. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, and I, I certainly hope that, that continues to happen oh, yeah. for the Republican Party, because I really think that is the straw that will break the both Cyrus back, is the assertion that we have to make that saying both sides are equally bad is racist, mm-hmm. is a white nationalist statement to make. It is. There is only one side that's preventing black people from voting, yeah. that's preventing black the black voice from being heard uh, in the United States government. And it's the Republicans. And if you keep saying both sides, both sides, both sides, you are enabling white nationalism. And as a matter of policy, this is this is not an accident. This is the minute the Voting Rights Act was gutted. Every Republican legislatures all over the country pulled the trigger on this stuff. They were waiting to about black people. And that's why that's why the courts are packed. Mm -hmm. That's why all of it. It's it is conscious to keep white people in power. Mm -hmm. And it's time to call out the media for that, for enabling that. Uh, Speaking of calling out the media, um, a viral edited video of Joe Biden should be a warning to everyone to double check everything. Um, It was bad. And two people picked it up and ran with it before they bothered to check that it was a that it was a, a, a joke. Um, it was, wasn't a joke, but it was in it was James O'Keefe level rat fucking being done by uh, by our side, by our side, by the Chapo by our, boys, uh, you know, by the Chapo boys, and laughing about it. Yeah, because ha ha ha, everything's a fucking joke. And unless you know, the only people who, the only person who's allowed to win in this election is our guy. Everyone else is a monster who should be destroyed, no matter the tactic. Ha ha ha, we got away with it. You know, if you're twelve. Um, I suppose that's excusable. Uh, you're not. Uh, so I don't excuse it. Yep. And I think I speak for you, Drift Glass, when I say neither one of us is a Biden supporter yeah. at this moment. But I will pick him but, up and carry him across the finish line if yeah, I can do If he's the nominee. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you found this, Drift Glass, this week. I did. The 2020 election chess set. Yes. Watch which has empty Democratic podium uh-huh. for because you'll get you'll get the actual Democratic nominees when they are selected. For you'll get those fee, extras. blue gal. For, for an additional fee. fee, yeah. And uh, Mike Pence is the queen. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's a, <laughs> this is the virtue of watching weird cable channel because <laughs> the goofiest late, at late at night. Yeah, yeah. LA television. I'm up watching Firefly, and this thing comes on like, oh my god. First and here's the horrible thing. First thought: This is podcastable, blue gal. This, this is podcastable. Content. I have content. You said running. To I got to say, our whole house went total firefly this week it with did. the marathon on El Rey. Just that that was on a lot. <laughs> we love Firefly. Yeah. We do. All right. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, there are lines everywhere in Illinois sure to buy pot. There sure are. Uh, it's legal pot, and uh, kudos to Governor J.B. Pritzker, who also, uh, the day before pot became legalized in Illinois, he pardoned 11,000 low-level uh, marijuana convictions, yeah. which were just kind of, those were the easy ones. He's also doing a rolling pardon 
as other cases are reviewed. So this is the that was the beginning, like the ones, OK, this guy won conviction or whatever, you know, the easy ones. He did all those at once. And now it's a rolling pardon. He will continue to issue pardons as these cases are reviewed. Then there's this state rep uh, in the 55th Illinois State House District whose Facebook page is a Christianist nightmare. You know, protect the flag, protect the cross. Thank God we can still say Merry Christmas. Thank God. And he has been, this guy has been lying about pot and buying legal weed in Illinois and that that might prevent you from being able to buy a gun later. You're going to go on the gun grabber You're going to go on a government database. You're for sure going to go on a government database and then that'll get shared with the federal government and then that'll come back to the state government and then... G.B. Pritzker's coming for your guns. <laughs> when Barack Obama <laughs> kicks in your door to take your guns. And, right. you know. Oh. Right. And this is the whole thing. This and is, this was, you know, and I guess he's trying to say, okay, so buy, continue to buy illegal weed. Is that what he's saying? Because. Uh, he, he, again, imposing logic on anything he's said <laughs> with a cool parent. Um, but the thing is, the local Sinclair affiliate picked up from this state rep, we we assume, this lie breathlessly reported and uh yeah cre- reported it as watch out you might uh not get be able to get your gun purchasing card if you buy legal pot well i'm i'm here to tell you that what what they do when they when you buy pot legally in illinois is they scan your license to make sure you're old enough to buy it right they scan my license at Target when I buy a bottle of wine. Right. You know? and that's why you can't have guns. My wife cannot have a gun in Illinois. <laughs> my wife, your wife can't have guns. She buys domestic wine. I buy too wine. much Malbec. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, all the, all you people out there buying Bud Light in Illinois and getting your license scanned, you know, the government's putting you in a database. Yeah. Well, and this was debunked by a local uh, an, uh, local institution, a local reporting Jim, institution. Jim, absolutely. Um, yep. uh, Capital Facts. Capital Facts, yep. Capital Facts, F-A-X, because yep. when he started doing this, he had a fax machine. Um, he came to the Capitol and picked up on what was going on and wrote down rumors and wrote down stuff, and people started confiding in him decades ago. And it's a local, uh, indispensable local political hot sheet. And it was like, nope, they're lying to you. <laughs> you're not, you're not going and on. And Sinclair pulled the story and issued issued a correction. So we're going to have more of this kind of crazy fear mongering, though. You know that anytime there's a change, it's time to fear monger and make sure people think that Democrats are trying to put you in a database. Well, and, and this is yeah. why it's so important to get rid of local newspapers, honey, because. <laughs> Because um, they can interfere with my Facebook post they might, about yeah. how government's trying to take you take away your guns. Yeah. 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 All right. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. By the way, we love our listeners. We love we all do. of you. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. And and it's it it's going to get better. Uh, yeah. we'll, we're going to fight for it. And we're going to be here all year long. So we are. don't worry about it. 52 weeks. Absolutely. Yep. Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty, however, is a beautiful German Shepherd dog. Her name is Fida, which is feminine for Fido. Mm -hmm. And uh, Abraham Lincoln's dog was named Fida. Did you know that? I did not know that. Fida is a senior dog, Mm -hmm. uh, aging very gracefully, we must say. And of course, Fida demands freshly poured dog food, our fake sponsor, whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor just like Fida and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Fida at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. And we have heard from a couple people this week who liked that buy me a coffee 
okay. uh, option at our website because uh, it lets you just give us five bucks real quick. Just click, click, and you've given us five bucks. And if there's something on one particular show you really loved, then you can click on it and give us five bucks, buy us a coffee, that kind of thing. So good. Good for you. Thank you for doing that. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information, buy me a coffee, Patreon, etc. It's all there at proleftpod.com. And we do not put your name in a database so that you can't buy a gun. Narrator, spoiler, we are coming for your guns. Yeah, You're in a database. <laughs> Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Uh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties sincerely hope that the Democratic Party is out there registering voters at the long, long lines at the legal pot purchasing outlets. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020. DGBG Productions.